Hello and welcome to this edition of Jamaica Magazine. I'm your host, Adrian Atkinson. Inside today's show, we have some financial tips on how you may get rid of that credit card debt. This and more in this week's program. It promises to be an exciting one. Don't go anywhere. <music> Jamaica's last major hurricane may have been some years ago, but that does not mean that we should take the hurricane season for granted. Certainly, even without a major hurricane, there are weather occurrences that are detrimental in nature, and our responses to them, or the lack thereof, can certainly have adverse effects. Let's listen now as the Meteorological Service breaks down what is expected and how we can best prepare. Welcome to Get the Facts, the show that gives you information on the latest topics. I'm Theodore Henry. You likely know that we have been in the hurricane season since the beginning of June and will be until November. You should also know that this season has been predicted to be a very active one. Here to tell us what that means and what we can do to prepare as best as possible is Mr. Rohan Brown, Manager of Weather Services at the Meteorological Service. Mr. Brown, welcome to Get the Facts. Good to be here. All right, let's jump into getting some facts. All right, so predicted to be a very active hurricane season. That wording is accurate, you're saying? That is correct. And that is based on two primary factors. Right. The first factor is that we are transitioning from a El Nino to a La Nina in terms of climatic factors. Okay. And when you have a La Nina, you have more convective activity, mm -hmm. you have weaker trade winds, mm -hmm. you have less vertical wind shear, and those factors allow for the quick growth and development of tropical storms. So break it down for me now. When it, what does an active hurricane season look like? What should I expect? All right, so in an active hurricane season, right, you expect anything above 14 um, named storms, of which seven will be hurricanes and Ooh. three major hurricanes. Wow, okay. Right? okay. So that is what an active season, or anything above that is what we consider an active season. All right, so, so act activity in the season doesn't really have, you can't say like it's going to come near Jamaica or anything, it's just a season it's overall. It's a season and the likelihood of the development of systems within a season, gotcha. based on climatic and atmospheric conditions. All right, got you, got you, got you. So you've given us the prediction in terms of number. Uh, any prediction in terms of intensity? Uh, not at this time, but what we're expecting is just the general numbers, the development. Mm -hmm. So anywhere between 17 to 25 named storms, right. of which 8 to 13 could become hurricanes, and of course another 4 to 7 major hurricanes. So most of the predictions are in terms of the numbers, right? And in terms of the intensity, um, that is where you'd mention the major storms. Because mm -hmm. the major storms are category 3, 4, and 5. Right, right, right. We're going to touch on that in a little bit. Sure. But before that, Jamaica land we love. Mm -hmm. Are there any areas, um, topographically, geographically, that we can expect to be affected more and why all right so let's start we are we're an island state so mm -hmm. and storms normally have broad spans so mm -hmm. a storm either passing over directly over Jamaica or near Jamaica could affect the entire country right mm -hmm. but if you're living in a low-lying and flood prone area if you live on a hillside high elevations if you're near the gully bank or waterways, those are, uh, if you're located in those areas, those are areas of concern. But because we are an island state, right. and because the span of those storms anywhere in the island could be affected. Okay, okay, but, but low-lying, well, let's, let's do that again, mm. flood-prone areas, right. mm. uh, uh, steep hillside right. areas, uh, those... Uh, the, the high elevations where you have more, okay, so in the structure of the storms, mm -hmm. 
um, the higher you, you go up to about um, 850 millibars or about um, 5,000 feet, the higher right. up you go, you have stronger winds as you ah. go up. So if you're on the hillside, you're more likely to get stronger winds. And the lower down you are, the more water you will exactly. get. Exactly, so that is correct. So I really need to be in the, about well. that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so can you, you had, you had mentioned categories. Mm -hmm. Give us a, a quick rundown of what the categories mean. So for storms, um, they're normally categorized by the Sapphire Simpson hurricane scale. Mm -hmm. And in that scale, you have numbers one to five. Okay. And a category one is a storm or a hurricane that is anywhere between 119 kilometers per hour to 153 kilometers per hour. That is what you call a category one storm, right? Okay. And they're defined by their wind speed based on the Sapphire Simpson hurricane scale. Right. A category two is anywhere between 154 kilometers per hour to 177 kilometers per hour. How fast do you drive? You drive out what, 80 kilometers per hour? Don't answer. I can't, I can't say that on, on camera, <laughs> but yeah. Right. right, and then you have the um, the major hurricanes, the Cat 3, 4, and 5, and the Cat 3 is anywhere between 178 kilometers per hour to around about 208 kilometers per hour. Mm. That's a Cat 3. A wow. Cat 4 is anywhere between 209 kilometers to 251 kilometers per hour. And of course, a Cat 5 is anything above a 252 kilometers per hour. And wow. that is catastrophic. That is mm danger beyond compare. Right, I won't even ask if, if there's anything beyond the Cat 5. No, no, and scientists that. agree that, for the most part, I'm saying that it doesn't make it sense to get a 6, 7, or 8, because right. a 5, in the, a definition of a 5 is just catastrophic. Have we ever witnessed a 5? Uh, not on the island, but systems would have moved over and then after the past Jamaica, they became a Cat 5. Ah, uh, okay, okay, okay. So, okay, how does this season uh, compare to previous seasons because we've been hearing active hurricane season I, I think for the last mm -hmm. few years mm -hmm. is this significantly more and par what are the trends we're seeing okay so in terms of trends over the last 10 years we have been seeing an increase in the number of storms year after year after year um last year um 2023 was the fourth most active in terms of hurricanes we had 20 unnamed mm. storms during that period so yeah. there were active storms the good news and also not so good news was that um, none of them affected Jamaica. A potential right. tropical storm did move over Jamaica late November, mm -hmm. um, but we were not affected. But elsewhere, you would have had tropical storms. Yeah. 20 named those. storms last year. Wow, so we're, we're, we're not going, we're, we're not decreasing. No, no, and the climatic factors like uh, El Nino and the warm sea surface temperatures that are occurring are suggesting that you will be getting more numbers of storm as the years go by. Wow, wow. Okay, we're getting the facts and we're talking to Rowan Brown of the Meteorological Service. When we come back, we'll talk about how best to prepare for a hurricane. Please, stay tuned. Whatever you do, don't be this guy. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your lifeguard speaking. For your safety and that of those around you, please listen carefully to what I'm going to say next. Whenever possible, swim at a beach with a lifeguard on duty or where signs indicate that swimming is safe. Two, this should probably be number one, but learn how to swim. 3. Stay in the designated swimming area. 4. Read and follow all guidelines and never swim alone. 5. If you fall into difficulty, raise your hand in the air and call for help. 6. Pay attention to local weather conditions and forecasts. 7. If you observe someone in distress, tell a lifeguard. Or if you don't see one, phone 119 or 110 and request a coast guard. And before you swim off with this information, my friend Bernard has another tip for you. Everywhere you go, I see a fishing vessel like those small ones up there in the harbor. Anywhere you go, I see those small vessels. That's the safest area to swim.
Welcome back. We're talking hurricanes and a very active hurricane season with Rowan Brown, manager of weather services at the Meteorological Service. Mr. Brown, let's keep talking about those hurricanes. Let's talk about the people level now. Now, how do I relate with a very active hurricane season? What should I do? Preparation. So if you're hearing that it's going to be an active hurricane season, what are you going to do in order to prepare for that season? Mm -hmm. And so basic things, at the first um, part of the hurricane season or at the start of the hurricane season, there's some simple things you could do. Check your backyard, look at your trees. Do you need to trim those um, trees? Um, check your housing, um, are your hurricane latches or, or in place? Um, right. you understand? Are, are the waterways, um, the gullies, the rivers, the, the, the banks um, near your housing, are, are, are the gullies clean? So those are some things that you can do in, uh, at the start. But if you hear a hurricane watch is happening. Rush to the supermarket immediately. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet, because a part of preparation is, is planning ahead. Right. So probably from far as January, you could be saying, when I'm buying my, 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 my monthly or weekly stocks, I could save a tin of this, right. a tin of that, once it's non-perishable. So you could have been saving stuff mm -hmm. all along and you replace them. So if you, if you save up to 10 and you say you have 10, say let's 10 tin or uh, uh, corn beef, so to, so to speak. Right. And when you reach 11, you, you could replace it um, with a newer one. So you could be building your stock as you go on. But also there are some things you could do, um, check do you have flashlights? Mm -hmm. Do you have batteries? Um, there are some persons that you need to check on. Um, um, the elderly. Right. Um, children, of course. Mm -hmm. um, what about um, um, women in their late or advanced stage of pregnancy? Um, those are individuals who need to be taking extra precaution during um, the hurricane season or if they hear that a hurricane is coming. So right. one of the first things we can do is to prepare. But most importantly, we need to listen to the bulletins from the meteorological service. And I stress that because anybody can say anything. Right. And the Met Service has the individuals with a the training capacity, the knowledge, the technology in order to provide the most accurate forecast possible. And therefore, you need to be listening to the Met Service, whether it's on your radar, your television, your smart devices, but listen to the authority or source that you can trust. Right, and if I could underline something that you mentioned, essentially it's take the rush out of preparation. That is correct. You know, so that's an that's a important one. So I don't need to be rushing to the supermarket because mm -hmm. beforehand I would have been planning and preparing just in case there is a passage of a hurricane. And there's a part of the plan that involves knowing what to do if. Mm -hmm. Right, right? That's, that that's, that's important as well. That is correct. That is correct. So, of course, um, the, you must know where your shelters are. Mm -hmm. What if you have to evacuate or leave? You must know where you're going. Am I going to my friend's house? Am I going to the shelter by the church? So those are things that you need to, to know as well. You, know, so you must have a, what we call, call a survival kit. Right. What if you need to be out of your house for um, a three day, a two day period. You must have a survival kit, a first aid kit, extra food, blanket, flashlight, Understood. just in case. Understood. You mentioned listening to listening to the authoritative voices. And I remember mm -hmm. a few years back, there was a lot of breaking news coming out on, on social media in particular. Mm -hmm. And the Met Service was like, no, 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 mm -hmm. no. Mm -hmm. What are some of the, like, give me the top two misconceptions you've seen people have about hurricanes. All right, so, so for example, um, I, I've heard, right, that um, because we're so God bless, um, hurricanes will not come to Jamaica. Mercy. Uh, right, right, right. Yes. And although I, 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 I'm a believer in the power of God, and when you, but um, there are instances in the Bible um, where, you know, you had the, the, the persons who were not prepared, like five virgins were wise and five, mm. or you build on a, on a sand and not a solid rock. So right. there are instances, right, that just in case you have a hurricane coming across Jamaica, like a Gilbert or a Sandy, are you prepared? Right. And sometimes we take the notion that we are God bless and therefore we will not be affected. But what if? What do you do? Right. And also, um, persons always say, well, um, it's only winds. It's only winds. Yeah, it's At only 200 winds. Miles right, kilometers right. Per hour. But water can be a deadly killer. Right. Whether it's via storm surge, that is abnormal rising of the, the sea tides, mm -hmm. or you have flooding 
and that flooding event, um, you can have, um, say, about 200 millimeters of rainfall over a three-hour period. That will cause significant flooding. So most times when people think hurricane, they're thinking wind. But the water hazard in terms of either flooding or storm surge right. can be deadly. And the water, the water can also degrade a construction as well, just just the water from the sky. Right, the water, and it can also like sec secondary um, hazards like landslides can occur. Mm. So therefore, the water hazard itself is something that persons don't always think about. They think about the wind, but the water hazard is deadly. All right, so it's more than wind, and preparation does not, not uh, faith does not preclude preparation. That is correct. You must be prepared. So how should communities handle evacuations and sheltering during a hurricane? And so if the experts tell you that you need to evacuate, they must have done some analysis. They would have known that the risk factors of your particular location, and therefore a consensus would have been done for that evacuation order to be given. It's not just somebody get up and no, say, no, leave your no, house. No, 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 no. So a number of entities would have come together, sat down, discussed it, and the end result is that based on where you are, mm. you need to evacuate. Right. So if you, if there's an evacuation order, you must know where you're going. Primarily, it might be the shelter, mm -hmm. or it might be a friend, a relative, but also you must also make sure that your friend or your relative is in somewhere safe. Mm. and not necessarily in another risk era, so yes. to speak. You understand? Yes. So therefore, again, we're going back to the preparation, the preparation. What do you know before? Mm -hmm. So if you have that evacuation order, it means that an analysis has been done and you need to leave. If you're leaving, you need to have some stuff with you. You need to secure your documents, but you should have been doing mm -hmm. that when right. you heard about um, the bulletin, whether it's a watch or a warning. So when the Met Service issue a watch or a warning, it means that you should be on the ready. You should be start doing these things because there is a strong possibility that you might be affected by a storm. So right. if you're asked to evacuate, the wisest thing to do is comply. Right. Do so, but do so wisely. And trigger the plan that was already prepared. Excellent. Sir Brown, we're in the last few seconds of this interview. The people are watching. You've given them so much. Give mm. them your last words. As I always said, people always talk about the numbers and the trends and the patterns. But the most important number is one, because all it takes is the passage of one system near Jamaica or across Jamaica to cause significant damage, the loss of livelihood, and most importantly, the loss of life. So this hurricane season be prepared. Start preparing and continue to be prepared. All right. Be prepared and take the rush out of preparation as we discussed in the body of the interview. We want to thank Mr. Rowan Brown, the manager of weather services at the Meteorological Service, for taking the time to share with us. This has been Get the Facts and I do hope you have a productive week. And I'm Theodore Henry. See you next time. All motorists, pedestrians, private and public operators, motorcyclists, it is important for us to drive defensively. Driving defensively saves lives, and we know that lives are most important to each and every one of us. It is important also to be trained and certified as a defensive driver, for it increases the likelihood that you'll prevent collisions on our roadways. Credit cards, are they a curse or a financial boon? I think the answer lies in how you use them, but you don't have to take my word for it. Financial expert Keisha Bailey is back, this time giving insight into how you can clear that credit card debt. Take a look. When we think about credit cards and who should get one and who shouldn't get one, it really comes down to your repayment ability. Because when you get a credit card, you're essentially getting a 0% interest loan until the repayment date. 
when that repayment date comes if you're unable to make the payment that is when we're in problem that's when you get the 45 percent the 50 percent interest being added on to your credit card balance so if you know that you're disciplined enough to make the monthly payments as it relates to how much you've spent that is when you want to consider getting a credit card Don't go out there and get these exorbitant limits that you know say you have to go beg, borrow our teeth to pay back. You want to get something that you know you can comfortably pay back each month and that's really the secret to credit card. When you think about reasons not to get a credit card, it's if you cannot manage to pay back the monthly balance. And so at that point now, you're going to have these high interest costs being added on to the balance. And you know, you end, you end up in, the, in like quicksand where you're just sinking, sinking, sinking because you can't pay back the, the interest, you can't pay back the balance. And it keeps going up every month, you're in a rat race. So if you know I am somebody who struggles to pay back things, but who are bugger people money, do not go and get a credit card to add to that level of debt. I love credit cards. Why? Because I love other people's money. Because using other people's money, aka leverage, is one of the best ways to build wealth. These days you have travel reward cards, you have cashback cards, and so using credit cards can help to pay for other things in your life. You're, you're getting money to use in other areas. Of course, I make sure I pay it back every month. You have to make sure you do that. So right now, go and look on your credit card statement, examine the balance, make sure it is something you are comfortable in paying. You control the balance that you get. The banks will suggest a balance to you when they approve the credit card, but you can say, hear what? Bring it a little lower because I want to be in a position to make sure that I can pay this money every month. Also, stick to your budget. Do not spend what you know you cannot pay back. That is not prudent. So the combination of making sure that your credit card has a limit you can pay back, plus being wise enough to stick to your budget every month, those two together will keep you in a position where you are not paying these exorbitant interests. So when we talk about the bugger bugger credit cards and some people have three, five, ten cards, you see them backing out these fat wallets, fat purses with a lot of credit cards. We don't necessarily want to be in that position. Why? Credit cards have annual fees. And if you have 10 credit cards, that means 10 annual fees. That really does add up. Get a set of cards, maybe one or two cards maximum that fit your budget and your lifestyle. Do you need 10 cards? No. The fact that you have 10 cards indicates that you may have a spending problem. And that's a bigger issue that you want to work through. Don't work through it with the cards. Work through it by being disciplined and sticking to a budget. Make money, money, make money, money, money. Make money, money, make money, money, money. The cash advance is another popular thing. A lot of persons go and, you know, they're pushing the credit card into the ATM and pull cash out. Nice, because we're getting other people money, but bad because cash advances have a very high interest rate tied to them. And even with some banks, the cash advance, you will never stop paying interest. A better option can be just going to get a short-term loan or going to a friend or a family member and borrowing the money from them over the short term. When we're thinking about which credit card we want, it can first come to the bank that you do most of your transaction with. Speak to them about the, the different suites of credit cards that they have and the benefits. Plus, with credit cards these days, they have a lot of benefits tied to them. So, when you go on the bank's website and you see all the credit cards that are there, you can pick which one works best with your lifestyle. You can shop around and find one of the lowest interest rates out there associated with the card and pick that one. Scams are very common. We want to protect ourselves as it comes to credit cards. You know, general things cover the pin where you're putting it. Do not just have the credit card lying out there, you know, exposing the number and the, the CVV on the back of the car. We don't want to do that. Some persons lock their credit card. I've seen them do that where, you know, they set a very small daily transactional limit so that if the card is stolen, somebody's not out there rolling up the, the, the credit card as well. Another thing when we think about credit card security is that two-step authentication. 
this is where now we, we do a transaction but we get notified by email or text message about that transaction that way if it is not you who did the transaction you see an email pop up you can say wait that's not me let me quickly call my bank tell them about this fraudulent transaction so that they can shut down my card and prevent any future um, fraudulent transactions on the card first way is called the avalanche method second way we call it the snowball method mm -hmm. number one in both methods stop using the card and then we're gonna write down the card balance and the associated interest rate on the card so that means pulling up the statement write down that outstanding balance and writing down the interest rate a lot of people don't know the interest rate but it's on the statement it's on your monthly statement or you can call the bank and ask them about the interest and then there are two ways you can go about it the first way you can start with the card with the highest interest rate and say i'm gonna focus on paying that off first so all your extra income you're gonna put that towards paying off the card the rest of the cards you're only making the minimum payment then you work down to the next one the next one next one i'm going down that series of interest rates second method is saying all right I want to pay off the car with the highest outstanding balance first. A lot of people choose that method because it gives you more satisfaction. You say, well, when I knock off the 10 million card or the 100 toes of card, I feel good. It inspires me to keep going. So you're going to pay off the car with the highest outstanding balance. Pay as much as you can. And then the remaining cards, you're only making the minimum payment each month. So I want you to take a stab at either one. They both work. Try tested and proven they work. Pay down by interest rate, the highest one to the lowest, or pay down by outstanding balance, the highest to the lowest. But key thing, stop using the cards while you're paying them off. Put them in a drawer, put them in a box, put them under your bed, under your mattress. Make sure you stop using them because that's the only way you're gonna be able to pay them down. You can't be paying and using at the same time. You're gonna be in a rat race and the balance will never go down. Dear Adventure Seeker, let Jamaica be your playground of exploration. If you're a thrill seeker, paragliding might just be your fit. Or if you're a nature lover, go for a hike and explore the beautiful flora and fauna. If you're someone looking to break a sweat, grab your bicycle and go for a ride. Discover the adventures that await you in Jamaica. Your perfect escape is just around the corner. We've come to the end of today's show. To catch a repeat of this or any other, feel free to log on to our website, gis.gov.jm. Until next time, I'm Adrian Atkinson. Do take care. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.